joined in November of 2015. She has over 200,000 in lifetime PRS and 502 personally enrolled, which is probably higher by now. <laughs> She's a mom of three boys under six and suffers from chronic illness. She is an abuse survivor and still shows up every freaking day. I was a 
divorced at the age of 23. Um, my brother was still in a car accident when I was 12. My best friend committed suicide shortly after I had my firstborn son. Um, he was actually, he's my first live born son. I had a miscarriage prior to him. Um, my daddy left me. I have daddy issues from when I was really little, you guys. I have all the issues that most of you carried with you. Maybe not all of them. Maybe you have a few different ones. But I've had a lot of trauma in my life. And a lot of things, like Megan said, that basically creep in your mind and make you believe that you're not worth it. You're not going to amount to anything in this life. So you might as well give up. You might as well just go along with your life every day, just what everybody else wants you to do. And in a small town in Wisconsin, because I'm from Wisconsin, any Wisconsin nice in here? Just my girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Wisconsin, at least in my small town, you go to college, you go to high school, you graduate. If you even graduate high school, you guys. You go to college, you get married, <laughs> you have babies, and that's all you do. That's all you do. And I chose to be different, especially my first marriage, you guys. No matter how much I was abused, I just kept taking it. I didn't want to be another statistic, because that's what we're supposed to do, right? We're just supposed to live our lives and be okay with it. And I chose to make a change, and I chose to make a change for my child, that he was not going to be raised to see how a man treats a woman, and that's okay, because it's not okay. And you guys, what happens in our lives is all these things come about, right? And most of us can't deal with it. All right? And if you don't deal with it, if you don't feel it, you're never going to heal it. Okay? That's my biggest thing I say to my team. If you never feel it, you won't heal it. So when I divorced my first husband, um, I made that choice to become a better mother, to become a better wife, to talk good things into my brain, to surround myself with only wonderful, amazing, positive things about myself. Because I also have body image issues just like Megan. And I wanna, I'm going to read you guys a poem. I heard it on a podcast that I listened to called Oprah Winfrey's Super Soul. If you guys don't listen to it, it's huge. So um, I'm going to read that to you because I'm hoping that when you guys listen to me read it, you print it off and you read it to yourself every single day. Okay, so hold on a second. Sorry. And then I'm going to get into the next part, okay? But it spoke to my soul. It literally brought me to tears. You guys, I hope I can read it without tearing up today. I can guarantee that. Um, so it's called Phenomenal Woman, and it's by Maya Angelou from 1978. She wrote it. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model's size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man the fellows stand or fall down to their knees. Then they swarm around the high behind bees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes and the flash in my teeth, the swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's an arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breast, the grace of my style. I'm a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump around or have to talk really loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care. Because I'm a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Doesn't it feel good when you listen to that? I know, I mean, it brings me to tears, you guys, because truth, I'm a freaking phenomenal woman, and every single one of you in this room is a phenomenal woman, and you have to believe that. So, like Megan said, you know, she did the, the baggage, right? I, I call them boxes. So in your life, when you struggle, you, you know, the trauma happens, or you get a hiccup in your life, it's a challenge, it's a fight, and you put it away, maybe it's death or, um, abuse or divorce or a loss of some sort, right? You take this trauma and you pack it up in a little box and you put it in the back of your head. You put it in the back of your brain, you guys. And you tell yourself, ah, I'll deal with that later. <laughs> and what happens is you keep boxing up all of your emotions, all of your feelings, and you become numb to it, right? Because you're, you've just thrown it in the back of your mind. You've never actually dealt with it. 
And then over time, and this might be when you're in your 20s, it was, for me, it was in my early 20s, um, but a lot of people, it's not until they're in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, when they're almost on their deathbed, they're like, holy crap, I didn't live my life because of this, 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 and this. Because like Megan said, they think that's what has shaped them. And it has, but in a positive way. But a lot of people don't see that because they don't actually heal themselves from it. So what I want you guys to start to really think about A lot of you might have already overcome this, but if you're packing up boxes in your brain, it's time to unpack them. And if you can't unpack them because they're too emotionally damaging, light those bitches on fire, okay? We don't have time for it. You will never grow into the amazing, miraculous, phenomenal woman that you were born to be, okay? A sperm and an egg joined that exact moment to make you, and there's only one you. That's what makes it beautiful, you guys. That's what makes you freaking amazing is there's only one of you. You need to be yourself. You need to own your truth, you guys. No matter how difficult it is, no matter how hard it is to get over a challenge, your life is going to be a series of fights. This isn't it for you. If you're like, wow, this has been great. My life has been good. I've been blessed. Good for you. I'm proud of you. That's amazing. I wasn't so lucky, and a lot of women aren't so lucky. But you need to own your truth, you guys, and you need to overcome everything that comes in your way. And it's difficult. It takes a lot of daily affirmations. It takes a lot of personal development. It takes a lot of crying and screaming and anger. I was a really angry person for a long time. You didn't see me cry ever. I would throw fists instead. <laughs> and uh, I had to change, you guys. I had to make a change for myself because um, I didn't love myself. And if I couldn't love myself, how could anybody love me? All right? So what I want to do, what's the time? Oh, God, I've got 15 minutes, you guys. Oh, my gosh. So your life is a series of fights. So think about this, you guys. With a challenge that comes up, with a hiccup that comes up in your life, instead of running away from it, you need to fight it. You need to stand up and fight for what's right, fight for your belief, fight for your work because you are worth it. And if you don't fight it, and you walk away from the fight, you're walking away from your life. And you're walking away from your destiny. And you can think about this in your life, and you can think about this in your business. For me, it's my business. I was meant to hit that join button. At that exact moment I joined you guys, because when I joined, my car got repossessed. I was like, well, shit. I guess I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of wallowing and pity, I had to tears and I was a little bit angry and I said, no, Joe, you can't do this. We're going to get up and we're going to fight this. And I had pink status in three and a half weeks on $3,300 and I got a $900 paycheck. It was like $809, so basically $900. And I about to my pants, okay? Like, <laughs> blew my mind, you guys. When I started this business, I had two, I only had two sons at that time when I joined in 2015, November 2015. I was working 50 hours a week in a local clinic. I was training doctors how to code. Um, and I was auditing their stuff, and um, I had to be somebody I wasn't. I loved my job, but I couldn't have colored hair. I couldn't show my tattoos. I had to wear business clothes. That wasn't me. I'm a jeans and a t-shirt type of girl. And heels. I need heels. I'm cool with that. I couldn't be me. I was very opinion opinionated, and they didn't like that. That's why I'm my boss, you guys. <laughs> um, I wasn't made for corporate America. When this business came in my life, I fought it for a day. And luckily enough for me, I found my worth right away, and I put my fists up to that fight. And I said I wasn't giving up until I hit that top of the company. And then even then, I'm not giving up. It's gonna be my legacy for my children. Because I fight every day for my three little boys. And there are days I am so sick, you guys, I don't wanna get out of bed. But I have to because I'm a mom, and moms don't get days off. And I'm never going to give up on this business. I roll out of bed, no matter how sick I am, and I work my business. Because what makes me feel good is to help other people feel good. So I go live. Like yesterday, I went live, and I just came home from urgent care. I, went, I came home and went live before I came here. To prove to people that no matter how sick you are, no matter how bad your day might be, no matter what crap just happened in your life, 
You can still show up. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to grieve. But you have to keep going. You can't let the baggage hold you down for the rest of your life because you will never amount to the amazing human being you were always meant to be. All right, we all have a destiny. We all have a reason and a purpose that we're here. We need to live out that purpose. We need to serve others. That's why I have you guys say, I am a healer. We are here to help people. And in my journey, I was, I'm lucky enough that I heal people. I heal them of their excuses and of their baggage. I mean, I help them. They make that choice to heal. So I hope you guys can make that decision today to decide that you are worth it. And you're a freaking phenomenal woman. Can you all say that out loud? Can you say, I am a phenomenal woman? I am a phenomenal woman. Say a little bit properly. <laughs> <laughs> I am a phenomenal woman. All right, so I have one last thing I want to do with you guys. So I'm going to actually sit down for this. So I'm going to have you all sit straight up in your seats, backs up against the, the backrest there. Oh, well, thank you very much. Feet on the floor, both of them. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> okay, let me get into my phone. We're going to do something on my phone. Okay? So I want you to clear your minds with me. And the reason I'm sitting down is because I don't want my heels to click, okay? I want you guys to really, really focus. And um, see yourself through what I see. So you're going to use my eyes today, okay? You're going to use my two eyeballs, not yours. All right, so I want you guys to all... Relax, get comfortable, and close your eyes. And I'm going to do this too. It'll be good for you. <laughs> All right. So you're going to see what is mine. Envision you walking into a big room. It might be empty. There might be people in there. Notice the people that are in this big room with you. Are they cheering your name? Are they praising you? Are they clapping for you? Are they cheering you on? You know what is coming in this room. You know whatever is coming has always been meant for you. You are ready to tap into the energy that's in that room and within yourself. You are ready to be this person. Take a look around at all the smiling faces, all the joyful tears as they praise your name. They're so proud of the person that you have become. They have all seen you struggle. They've all seen you in pain. And now they see you rise. They're clapping. You have served them. The people that are in this room might be people you've healed. That is what is ready for you. You are open to it. I want you to just feel the feelings in that empty room or full room. Maybe it's crowded. Maybe it's body to body in there. Maybe you have a huge support system. Feel how it feels to be in that space. Take a deep breath. Inhale the good and exhale the bad. Exhale all the garbage you guys. You are ready for this. You were born ready for this. Now it's time to own it. You open your eyes with me. And now I'm with Namaste. Thanks, guys.